Good morning. Good morning. And happy Tuesday. Today is the day to vote, which I almost forgot. But uh, um, yeah, it's voting day. And I hope everybody's doing well. I hope you can hear me. I don't even know if I can see if anybody's on. So if I don't respond to any comments, I do apologize. I really can't see. <laughs> I'm just happy to be able to have my mic back. My mic was not working yesterday. And so I was having a little bit of technical difficulties. But yesterday was a um, just an intro to what I'm going to be talking about. But today... Today, I have some good stuff to talk about um, from the Psalms in the Bible. And um, we're looking at the Psalms from a songwriter perspective because the Psalms are filled with so much great information and just real, authentic, raw emotions. And so um, I wanted to be able to dive into it but I wanted to dive into it with you guys whoever's on here and whoever needs to learn um, maybe you're not watching this live but maybe you're listening to it afterwards and um, you know there's something there for you too to learn so um, I just want to welcome whoever is on again I cannot see if anybody's on um, my screen won't tell me and I'm getting all of these little error messages, but um, I'm hoping that this is working and you know, just going for the best here. So let me get into it because I don't plan on being here too long. This is just a quick little intro um, of today's session. And um, I wanted to talk about how the Psalms can help us as songwriters, you know, why am I looking into the book of Psalms? Why should songwriters care about Psalms? And, um, you know, we, we learn information from all kinds of things. And for me personally, the book of Psalms is just a beautiful, beautiful collection of poetry that were turned into um, prayers. They, they became prayers. They became songs that the people sung in in their um in their time and king david was a songwriter he was a musician he was a poet he was a philosopher he was a king and he wrote many of these psalms um many of them were not written by him they were written by others but they wrote these um during times of distress you know a lot of times they were times of distress and they put music around it and it was the same thing that some of the people were going through and so we're going to explore that a little bit um the word psalms comes from the greek which is psalmoi and i think i'm pronouncing that correctly i'm not sure but it means songs of praise and that word comes from the hebrew tehillim which also meant praise songs and so today i am going to be looking at Psalm 4, Psalm number 4. I'm skipping over a couple of them, Psalm 3. But um, again, I just, before I uh, continue, I just want to say if anybody's on here and I cannot see your comments, so if you're on here, I apologize if I don't respond to you. Um, I will get this right eventually. But anyway, <clears throat> I wanted to look into Psalm chapter four because it's such a beautiful Psalm. And it starts off saying, for the director of music with stringed instruments, a Psalm of David. And so this particular Psalm was um, written by David because it says it there. That's how we know it was written by David. Um, and this was supposed to be something that he, and, and it says, um, for the director of music so whoever was directing music at that time david wrote this particular psalm and he wanted them to sing about it and we're going to dive into it a little bit but um it's interesting that he would want this particular psalm sung i know what i can do i can actually excuse me i'm a little bit all over the place um but perhaps i can just see from my 
other uh, here we go make sure somebody I can see any comments that are coming up okay so he wanted this particular thing sung this particular song sung in the worship area um, so I'm gonna read it to you first and then I'm gonna break it down just a little bit so it says answer me when I call to you my righteous God give me relief from my distress have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you people, <clears throat> excuse me, how long will you people turn my glory into shame? How long will you love, <clears throat> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Obviously, I need to warm up before I speak, not just before I sing. How long will you people turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. For the Lord hears when I call to him. Tremble and do not sin when you are on your beds. Search your hearts and be silent. Offer the sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. Many, Lord, are asking, who will bring us prosperity? Let the light of your shine, face shine on us. Fill my heart with joy when their grain and new wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. So when you first read this, it's like, it feels like, okay, like this is all over the place. Um, but there was a purpose to it. There was a purpose to him praying this, and we're going to get into it. <clears throat> all right. So first he says, Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Um, so at, David is asking for relief. He's asking for his prayer to be answered, meaning that he had been waiting for a while for it to be answered. And how many times do we are, go, are we going through something and we're asking God to, to answer our prayer and we want immediate, immediate, response but we don't get it and so here he finds himself in this same situation he's he's crying out he needs relief and um here he's confessing to god that god hasn't answered his prayer that he hasn't given him an answer and he's in this distress situation and so um the people are singing this right or the people maybe it wasn't for them to sing. Maybe he wrote this so that they can understand what he was going through as a king. He was the head of the entire nation. And here is this man who is under this burden. And um, he's singing about it. Like, God, why haven't you helped me? Why haven't you answered my prayer? And then he goes on to say, How long will you people turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? And so when you read that, you're wondering, what is he talking about? But um, in studying this, David was being um, spoken, about, spoken about. There were people around him that didn't like him being king. And so they were spreading lies and they were spreading rumors about him and they were trying to remove him from his office it sounds very similar to a similar situation that we recently had in our nation um people were trying to remove him so they spread lots of lies they spread um rumors about him false information and so he was saying how long will you turn my glory into shame you know he here he is looking for some kind of respect you know as a king he was he held the highest office in the land and yet his opposers were trying to get rid of him by spreading lies and rumors about him and here david is calling them out he's calling them out basically he sees and he hears what they're saying and doing and so he's calling them out and um he's basically saying to them like you know you love delusions and you seek false gods and here I'm trying to serve the real God and so when I was um, thinking about this and, and how does it relate for a songwriter you know um, I, I think about 
my, my friend Taylor Swift, who has written numerous songs. And, um, you know, I don't know if you guys remember the song that she did a couple of years ago called Shake It Off. And with Shake It Off, it was all about what was going on in her life at that time. You know, the media and the tabloids were printing all this thing, all these things about her. You know, that she went from guy to guy and they were spreading rumors about the kind of person that she was and trying to tarnish her reputation. And, um, you know, all she's doing is writing music and, you know, just enjoying the gift that she has to write music. But people were taking her success and trying to, like, diminish her and, and put her down. And so with her songwriters, she wrote Shake It Off. And I don't know if you guys remember, but, you know, like, I'm not going to sing it now because I didn't warm up and, you know, anyway. Um, but she, I love what she did. I loved what she did because she didn't allow the rumors and the lies and all of the um, the negative things that they were saying and printing about her to put her down. And she didn't keep herself down. She allowed herself to bounce back from that. She didn't let her words break their words break her spirit you know so she puts it into a song and she says I stay out too late and I got nothing in my brain that's what people say mm hmm that's what people say they said that she was going on too many dates so she put that in the song I go on too many dates but I can't make them stay that's what people say mm hmm that's what people say and so she put that into a song right like she's actually putting back out there what was said of her and I feel like that's what King David was doing like he's like how long will you people turn my glory into shame like like it's some there's something wrong for him being who he was as king and so that's basically what Taylor Swift did and so she wrote her great hook that I love and uh and the, the pre-chorus she wrote um, but I keep cruising. I can't stop, won't stop moving. It's like I got music in my mind saying it's going to be all right because the player's going to play, 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 play. Y'all remember that? Right? So she's saying these people are going to do whatever they want to do. They're going to say whatever they're going to they want to say. The haters are going to hate, 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 hate. But I'm just going to shake, 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 shake it off. And so, hey. I would say that's a mic drop right there. <laughs> that is a mic drop right there. Um, what she did, she took the negativity that was spoken against her and she shook it off. And we have to do that too because, you know, not everybody's going to like what we do. Not everybody's going to like this video that I'm posting. But you know what? Shake it off. That's going to be my uh, a theme for the year maybe. We'll see. So getting back to David. Here, this is his stand-up statement, I believe. David was like, so Taylor Swift said, I'm going to shake it off. Taylor, um, Mr. David the King, King David, he said, <clears throat> know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. So he's letting them know, look, you guys can talk about me all you want, but the Lord hears when I call. So he wasn't the, waiting for the media to defend him or the newspapers to write all the great things that he did. Because, you know, he could have been like, well, you guys forgot that I slayed the giant. And you guys forgot that I became king. Like, he didn't, he didn't go back and say, like, look at all the things I did in my life. Like, look at all of the victories I've had. You know, he, he didn't go back and remind them of his past. He said... Look at who I am today, right? That the Lord has set apart <clears throat> for himself his faithful servant. He was saying, I'm faithful to God. And because I'm faithful to God, he hears me when I call out to him. And so he wasn't looking to gain their respect. He was reminding them that he is God's servant. And he's letting them know, you can talk about me all you want, but the Lord hears when I call to him. The Lord will defend me. And so that was where he was putting his trust. And, you know, sometimes we get 
in that kind of um, like we want to hide when people talk about us and when people say negative things or we reach a place and, and people, you know, all the negative, the haters come out. We want to hide, but we, we don't need to hide and we don't need to stand up to them. And, and I mean, you can, right? He did. And so did Taylor. You don't need to stand up. But if you put your trust in the Lord, then there you go. You have what you need. Verse four, he says, tremble and do not sin when you are on your beds. Search your heart and be silent. Offer the sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. So he's telling them, look, you're sitting in bed. You're laying there looking for ways to um, to destroy me and to get rid of me. Stop talking about me. Why? Because the Lord hears and he's going to do something about it. So instead of talking about me and finding fault with me, search your own hearts and be silent. Stop talking all of these lies and making up lies about me. You know, he says, offer the, the sacrifices of the righteous and, and trust in the Lord. He's telling them, look, I've trusted in the Lord. You guys need to start trusting in the Lord. Um, and so, yes, so he, you know, he's singing, he's singing this back to them because he wants them to learn wisdom. And he's not saying, look, I'm going to go after you. I'm going to try to destroy you. I'm going to do to you what you're doing to me. No, just learn to trust in the Lord and, and forget about me. Forget about what I'm doing. The Lord will deal with me. And that's what he's basically singing here. Then he says, in verse 6, many, Lord, are asking, who will bring us prosperity? Let the light of your face shine on us. Fill my heart with joy when their grain and new wine abound. And so when I re read first read that, I was like, you know, why is he all of a sudden bringing about, um, bringing prosperity into the conversation? But the problem was that people were talking about him and these negative people were saying things about him that weren't true and part of that was like he needs to get out of the office he needs to remove himself from the palace because all of the um all of this rumors and misinformation and lies that were being spread about him were causing people to lose confidence in him as a leader and so they were making um they were made to feel like he couldn't do his job anymore and so by doing that, they were saying the economy is going bad. Um, you know, where where is where is the pro who's going to bring us prosperity? Who will bring us prosperity? And he's now singing about it. He's hearing what they're saying. He's hearing that they're talking about him at his you know the, the kind of leadership skills that he has that they weren't he wasn't qualified anymore because they were um, saying that like. Everything is being affected, the way we live, our economy, all of those things. And so he wasn't praying, Lord, please make them like me and please help them to see that I am the king and that I will bring them prosperity. No, David prayed, let the light of your face shine on us, fill my heart with joy. Meaning he was saying, God. I can't bring prosperity. You're the one who brings prosperity. So you have to kind of read into it and understand what was being said because you can just overlook it and not understand. But David was saying, let the light of your face shine on us. Um, meaning prosperity comes from the Lord. And if the Lord is looking down on you, if his face is on you, then that means his favor is on you, his goodness, his blessing. But when the Lord turns his face away, it's because there's sin and he, he can't look at that. He can't look at sin. And so he turns away. And when he turns away, then um, that covering is not there. But it's fascinating. It's fascinating that he would say, let your let the light, just the light of your face, if it shines on us, then it will bring my heart joy. Why? Because if you're looking at us, then we know that you are with us, that you're watching us, that you're protecting us, that you're you're providing for us. And that's what David was saying here. Fill my heart with joy when their grain 
and new wine abound. And we all know that when times are good, what do people do? People go out to eat and they go out and they, you know, they drink and they celebrate and they have time with their families. But they, they, so David was praying, you know, don't, don't look at me, but let the Lord look at you and bring his favor. And so this part kind of reminded me of a song. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys know it, but it's by Aloe Black and it's called I Need a Dollar. And one of the lines in his lyrics says, and I'm looking for somebody, come and help me carry this load. I need a dollar, dollar, dollar is what I need. And if I share with you my story, will you share your dollar with me? And so we understand that from this song, this this writer is in desperation and he's in need. And the message that he wants to say is like, can somebody please help a brother out? Can you give me a dollar? Because that's all I need. I need a little something to keep me, myself going. And so... Um, but in reality, people are not so generous, right? We can't put our trust in people because they, they're not as generous as we would like them to be and, and <clears throat> um, proactive as we would like them to be. So he's crying out for help, but yet, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, we don't know if he ever got that dollar <clears throat> from his relatives or his friends or whatever. But King David put it into perspective, like, don't come looking for me um, for money. Go to the Lord. Trust in the Lord. He will supply all of your needs. And so, yeah, so I was thinking about that song when I read this here because it's two different parallels. Where is your perspective? Where is your trust? Where is your hope? Where is your dependence? And so for King David, his dependence was on the Lord. It was on the Lord. And lastly, um, verse 8, we're at the end of the psalm. He says, In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. And his trust was not in his ability and what was happening because what was happening to him was out of his control. And he could allow that to to steal his peace, to rob his joy, to rob his um, his mindset, you know. But he he didn't put his hope in people and and whether they liked him or not. He didn't depend on that to keep him secure and safe. He says he was gonna pe lay down in peace um, and sleep. You know, and that's what happens when we're in this situations where we're dealing with people and or things are happening out of our control. We can't sleep. That's one of the first things that happens. We toss and we turn at night. Um, but David was like, I'm not I, I can lay down. I can lay down and sleep and be at peace. Why? Because my trust is not in what people are saying. My trust is not in what people are doing, but my trust and my hope is in the Lord. And so he couldn't control the economic condition of the of the country, of his country. He couldn't control how people felt about him. But he could control where he put his trust. And he put his trust in the one who was his defender, the one who could deliver him, the one who could protect the entire nation and use him. And so, yeah, that that's when you know that you're in a good place, when you can... Put your hope in the Lord, and no matter what is happening around you, you can lay down and be at peace because everything is going to be okay. Right? So that was it, my friends. That was a look into Psalm 4. Now, did you expect Psalm 4 to be this juicy? There's drama, there's rumors. There's um, a trying to remove someone from the throne. And, and look at how God used this song to teach the people about what this king felt and what he was going through and expose his heart to the people. Like, again, I go back to um, 
the very beginning, he wrote this and he said, he wrote this specifically for the director of music. He said, I want this song in the temple. And he wanted the people to understand his point of view. Like this is what was happening to him, but this is also what was not happening. He was not in, in personal distress and chaos. He was at peace. He was at peace, no matter what was being said about him. So what I learned from this particular prayer, this song prayer, is that I can be more dependent on God in, in situations. Um, not to be hung up with what people say or to back down from their comments, but to, to take what they said as fuel to continue to do the right thing and continue to do what is good and what is right and what is just and not to retaliate because our um, God is our defender he's our defender and so he's the one that would help us in times of trouble so yeah put my hope in God and so I hope that this has taught you something as well and that you can pull something from here and that you can see and relate to what was written in the Word of God that could help you as um, as you're going through situations and as you're dealing with things um, so yeah so listen this is the end of Psalm 4 I want to thank you if you're watching this on the replay leave me a comment let me know that you watched this on the replay let me know if you have any questions anything that I can do um, for you or show you or talk about let me know I'd be happy to do that and um, yeah if you have any songs that you use in order to help you when you're dealing with situations let me know what those songs are I'd love to hear about that um, I believe tomorrow I'm gonna be talking about Psalm 5 Again, another song written by King David. I'm not sure yet, but um, yeah, so just come, come on this road with me to learn together. And also, lastly, I just wanted to point out that um, I have a prayer guide. If you would love to be praying over your family and praying, you know, families are so important. They're important to God. That's why he gave them to us. Um, and I have a prayer guide that I'm looking at the little squirrel that's just like running through the tree there outside um, that you can download and it has a couple of scriptures that you can pray over your family every single day and you can find that on my webpage I've put a link to it in the description here it's at secondgenmusic.com under songs of psalms and it's a prayer guide for your family. So feel free to download that. I will send you a copy. Just send me your email and I'll send you a copy of that if that will help you. All right, guys. Again, I couldn't see if you guys were leaving comments. If you were, I apologize. Hopefully I'll get better at this. But um, have a great, fantastic day. I pray blessing over you. And I will see you on day three. Ciao.